whether you know me or not, I have to explain, I am not an early adopter. Meaning that I don't just look for new stuff and then start trying it, generally speaking. I'm kind of hesitant. I when I find something that works, I stick with it. However, we just had a student the other day come and Jeannie and she talked about tools. And she had a whole box full of things that we don't use. Okay. First, she showed Jeannie about this cute little hummingbird um, cutter. All right, so Go. this is the hummingbird cutter. It's from Creators Brand, and it's just a 3D printed little cutter that's a lot easier to hold than your typical pistol grip cutter. Um, so here we'll just score this line. So when you were looking for them, did you, were you just looking for cutters and this one popped up? Uh-huh, yeah. So I have, I learned with a pistol grip cutter, so it's all I know. Um, and I just felt like the pistol grip cutter was a little too large, and this fits really well for small hands. It gives you a lot more control with when you're running your score line. So it looks like your thumb is up front, and then it has a little indentation for yeah. your fingers. Yep. Got it. So, and I mean, you could hold it. Whatever's more comfortable for you. Okay. All right. Now, you know me, I, we only have one or two pistol grip cutters in our studio because I hate them so much. However, this little tiny cutter is really cool. I was looking at it the other day when they were talking about the uh, hummingbird cutter and my goodness you can put your thumb on top of it and, and rest, rest it which is not natural for me but you can also grip it on the sides it's a really flexible cutter and it fits right in the palm of your hand and so if you're a person who needs um, to have more control with less risk wrist problem, then this is definitely the one I would recommend for you. Uh, those longer handled um, grips just they're just horrible to me. I I mean they hurt my wrist more than they help. So that's why I don't like them. However, this little tiny one, and it's uh, on the Creators brand. Dot com website. That's where you can get them. I don't have one yet. I'm not so sure I need one. And, you know, it's 41 bucks. So, however, one of the things that I did do, I reached in my toolkit and I got a couple of different uh, glass cutters. This is a Toyo glass cutter and it's got a very, it's a small type thing and it's got this little palm rest and that that can be a convenient piece to use as well this one's even smaller this one fits in the crook of your hand and see you can just hold it with these two fingers You have pretty good control, and you can push down. It's it's pretty nice, and that way, people who have a hard time using a a palm grip can uh, can use this type and get this type of action. And so, these are the ones that don't hurt your wrist either. And and they're pretty nice. Okay, so you can get her cute little um, hummingbird or bee uh, pistol grip type um, cutter on the 
creatorsbrand.com website. Now the next thing she's going to talk about are running pliers. All right, so then I want you to tell me about your running pliers. So, I have no idea how to pronounce these. I'll show you the name. Looks like Filberschnitt. Something German. <laughs> they are German made. Um, <laughs> they are a little bit on the pricey end, but they have completely replaced my running pliers because these are specifically made for cutting curves. So you can do a straight line with it, but they are wonderful with curves. Let me see if I can cut a curve and show you. So you can okay. put pretty much an inside curve. That's good. An inside curve. So you're going to take your pliers and there's a little notch right there. This head actually rotates. Um, so you're going to line it up with your score line. Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see that. And then you're just going to barely squeeze until you hear it click. Ooh, and I saw the run. And you're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. So you're just bouncing back and forth between both sides. And you're lining that line up with your score line every time. Okay. There Perfect. Go. Very so. good. We always like to learn new things. Thank you very much for showing us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I did order myself a pair of the Silberschmidt, um, that's German, uh, running pliers. This is the same brand of uh, glass cutter for for doing round circles and <laughs> it's funny somebody has taken this off and put it on upside down. There we go. It wouldn't work very good um, if you have the suction cup and the glass cutter opposite of each other. Anyhow, um, they're they're pretty good running pliers. I didn't order a pair immediately when I saw them because to me it's a big deal going around and around. However, you can do complex curves and her having her pair and showing it convinced me that that I was being a, a, a late adopter and so it's true you can teach an old dog new tricks <laughs> okay so now we're learning a new thing and this is um, well I'll just let you say um, so this is just the way that I copper foil, which may or may not be correct, but I tend to use a FID. This is actually a, just something that I bought for when I was doing book folding, completely different hobby. Um, but I always just tack down the corners while I go. And then I burnish the edges. And then I use my burnishing wheel, and this is my favorite part of stained glass. Like out of all the steps, this is what I enjoy the most. And you just roll it and flatten your foil. Okay, so that's different than the way I do it, because I will pinch it all the way around, and then use the burnishing tool to do that. Yeah. Not necessary, but makes it super fun. Yeah. My little five-year-old nephew likes to help me do it too, so it makes it nice. Way okay. for him to engage with it in a safe way. Thank you. Yeah. Just seen foiling using um, the little wheel. And man, I remember when a, a lady on a South Carolina uh, public TV invented a, a wheel foiler. And Boy, did I think that was a waste of time. And really, I still do. However, you saw Aubrey and how much fun she was having with it. And so if, if you're looking for 
just having pure enjoyment, one of those might be a good idea for you. I didn't research where, where the best place to get one was because that's not one of those that, uh, that I would prefer. I mean, honestly, if you need a foiler and you don't have one, if you don't have something to burnish your foil, grab your Sharpie pen and use that because <laughs> they work great. Okay. Okay. So this is the Heiko 601 soldering iron. It is variable temperatures, so you can turn it up or down depending on your soldering speed or comfort level. Um, if you're a beginner, sometimes it's nice to turn it down to 360 or 310, or for doing your beaded edges, it's a lower temperature. It's going to not have your solder run as fast. Um, I tend to do it up at 410. It's just personal preference. So that's how you adjust the temperature. And then this is the stand for the Heiko. And in lieu of a wet sponge to clean your soldering tip, they have um, this little scrubby thing in there that you just shove your soldering tip into and then it tins it and keeps it nice and clean and then you can keep it in the stand for as long as you need um, and then with this once that gets full of solder because the solder will stick to that you just take this out dump that in the trash put it back in you can buy replacements for these so very there good go. so i am curious about your gloves I taught a class one time, and the young lady, they were all using gloves, and huh? one of the young ladies grabbed the soldering iron but didn't realize that it was hot until it had burned through her glove. Yeah. And so I thought, from uh, since then, I thought, no, no more gloves while soldering because I want you to know when it's starting to yeah, get hot. And that's the thing. It can give, gloves can give you a false sense of security. I use them just especially for when I'm using little pieces and holding them to do my edge soldering. Um, obviously, just don't touch anything if it's hot. I always wear them when I'm soldering just because it's habit. Um, okay, but, but you're careful. Even, even still, like these pieces that I just tinned, if I'm holding them for a long time with these gloves, I can start to feel the heat through the gloves. Okay, all right. But I'm sure if I touched that, it would not feel great. All right, just checking on that. I did get a burn yesterday, but it wasn't from this. It was from my curling iron. So <laughs> this is not the dangerous sport, apparently. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay. So I want to show the difference between a tinned edge and a beaded edge. So with a tinned edge, you're going to come in with your solder. So grab a little bit of solder. And you're just going to lightly run it across the piece and let any excess drip off. So that is tinned, and you can see that the edge of that is very, very flat. Um, the issue with this is if you were to put another piece of stained glass with it, eventually that is going to pull up, especially if it's on its own um, on an edge. So to bead the edge, we're gonna take more solder and we're just going to lightly tap as that bead grows. And I'm keeping my piece completely um, perpendicular to my work surface because if I move it at all, that bead's gonna run. So you always wanna keep it level. And then there's some parts that got a little lumpy, so I'll just go back in and tap them, make them a little bit smoother. And so now you can see this edge is pretty round. It's more thick. It's going to be more sturdy on its own or when it's you know in your stained glass piece. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, thanks for being with us. This was a fun little adventure to see new tools and, and see how other people use them. Those gloves are great, but like Jeannie said, you got to be careful. You, gotta, you don't want to get your brain thinking that it isn't hot. You don't want to melt your gloves. <laughs> so, um, anyhow... Enjoy the hobby, experiment with new tools. If you find new ones that we're not using, let us know about them and we'll be happy to look at them and tell you our opinion. Because <laughs> I've always got an opinion. All right, thanks for being with us and we'll see you next time.